everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, Yay! take that midweek break, and hopefully cover some of the stranger things <laughs> going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone, joined every week by <laughs> Jill Bryant and one Pedro Mateus and everyone at home. You know, you're supposed to be working, but that's cool. Watching this live. That's kind of brilliant. What's up? What's new? It is a fresh week. We do have a large selection of things. We even get a Microsoft story that's not really, <laughs> it's not really Linux related, but it, it, it's fun enough that we had to throw it in. But fair warning to everyone watching. You can pay attention, eagle-eyed among you. I am playing around with NDI because I'm severely grumpy still at Blackmagic because they've still not fixed the issue. And we're in week three of them discovering after a card being out for a year has issues with Red Ripper. So I'm like, you know what? You know what? I'm just going to be using video over IP for these two boxes. The um, Jill and Pedro are coming through. That was an adventure. NDI is too smart for its own good. It tries to do load balancing, even if you don't have link aggregation set up. And it was crawling all over my network, so I had to shut it off. So it was only going through the fiber connections into the Threadripper. And I think I have that sorted. We're testing it. We tested it Saturday three times when Twitch was like, yeah, you're not sending in signal anymore. But... Oh boy. <laughs> that was fun. And we uh. learned some things. So uh, yeah, I'll probably have a guide up on that depending. There's, I, I want to overcomplicate things one more time. So I'll try that again on Saturday for getting that set up because it definitely saves some people some money in capture cards and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's new with you, Jill? Oh boy. Well, I had a great time again on uh, Big Daddy Linux Live European Edition on Saturday, and that's always a lot of fun. And uh, something else cool, uh, yesterday on Linux Unplugged, we te tested uh, Matrix, um, otherwise known as Element Now, the social, open source social networking app. We tested that on Linux Unplugged, um, and uh, actually the plugin that it uses for, for audio and video is Jitsi, what we're using right now. So that was, and of course that worked great. <laughs> so it's like Jetsy with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Yes, <laughs> yes. And in fact, I just, I didn't even use the matrix client. I just went ahead, you know, and copied the, the URL and then pasted it in Chrome like I usually do for LWW. Oh man, you know what? <laughs> so... Copying URLs is pretty easy. It's the Dukes you have to yeah. watch out for, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now over here, the uh, teeny tiny little fan, it worked very well, Haplo, but uh, it wasn't enough, especially not mm -hmm. over the past couple of days. So I got a bigger one. <laughs> what kind did you get? In? It's uh, it's the same one. It's this one's branded Easy Ack, and it it's charging. You can see the uh, oh okay. little blink LED. There. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, the same as the old Polar ones, but yeah, just a different brand. Hot, and it's nice. No, that that it's the opposite. It's it's actually very very refreshing. Right on. <laughs> hey man, nice. A cool Pedro is best Pedro. <laughs> yes. Oh, but he had Ask to turn Nori. it off for the for the show so it didn't make noise. <laughs> yes. I didn't Just say the cool Pedro was right the microphone and you Pedro. I said it was best Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep him on edge. So Distro Watch <laughs> has added a new thing that I I find it. Just a little interesting because you're now able to compare package versions between distributions. What I have loaded up here is Debian versus Arch. Current versus, well, I should, in all fairness, testing Bullseye. You can see uh, there's a complete package breakdown, but these are the big ones like Abbey Word, um, Bash, Bind, Bees Up, uh, Cinnamon. All the fun stuff that you would normally like. Hey, I wonder what FFmpeg. To my surprise, man, this is one of the reasons I didn't tango with um, Debian testing. It's pretty much point for point for anything Arch has got running currently. So uh, yeah. good on you lot. And no, you're not welcome on my box because uh, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. there's a bunch of danger stuff in there <laughs> that I don't want to tango with. And I'll happily wait until Debian 11. Did you uh, see anything in there, Jill, mm -hmm. that you... Cut your eyes. Yeah. So I actually tested Debian with with the tiny core 
<laughs> Linux, which of course Tiny Core doesn't have a lot of apps. But I was just curious what it was, uh, what it had, and what it was missing. And it's a you know very lightweight distribution compared to Debian with all the things. Uh, it didn't have much, <laughs> but it, it's all you need to 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 run it uh, happy happily on older machines. And you know I think this is a really great great use of all the valuable information that DistroWatch has been collecting all these years, ever since 2001. Can you believe that? Been going to that website since then. But this was just this was really a great thing to do. And there is no other website that has this kind of data. So it's just perfect. <laughs> Pedro, what are you yeah, running? And the obvious, uh, the obvious joke is, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it still looks like it's from 2001. <laughs> uh, I, oh, yes. no, but it works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like when everyone, uh, when, whenever someone brings uh, Distro Watch uh, up in analytics conversation, it's like, oh, yeah, that website from the 90s. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> but you, yeah. If you have if you have nothing left in your argument, it's usually personal attacks or aesthetics. That's when you know you've won. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, we're doing that. See, I went by. Uh, what distribution? You, uh, you run some weird moon distribution now, right? I run KD Neon. KD Neon. Is that yes. reasonably <laughs> updated? Well, you're about to do the point release to that, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, KDE Neon is basically all of the latest QT and KDE packages on the Ubuntu LTS. And uh, the version that I'm currently running is still based on 18.04. But the version based on 2004 was released and it's uh, available for download right now and if you are running uh, kd neon you have the little teeny tiny little icon on the uh, system tray there which has been looking at me because it's got a completely different color than all the other icons it's like oh oh you really want me to do this okay <laughs> is kd neon considered like a lightweight package distro uh Yes, very much so, because the ISO itself is about half the size of Ubuntu's. I'm just looking and, at like, uh, nope, nope, you don't get that? Uh-uh, not that one. No. <laughs> not that. <laughs> yeah, no, the ISO is about half the size. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't really... It comes with all the KDE like base framework stuff that you'd need but it doesn't come with most of the apps that you that would actually use set framework but yeah it's co it comes with the kitchen sink and uh, says okay you have the sink now go build the rest of the house mm. and you do <laughs> which is part of the reason why i like it so <laughs> well i i run debian so i know those feels bro yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but tell me more like about the 2004 <laughs> Yeah, uh, 2004 version, like I said, is available for download right about now. And uh, yeah, they KD Neon is on a very slow um, release. It's not, you know, XFCE slow, but it, it comes close because they usually wait for the LTS to be out and have a point release. So you saw it's like, oh, Ubuntu now has a 2004.1 point release so kd neon is now available based on 2004 which i guess is a good way to ensure that the base operating system is there so they can just dump kd on it and break what's left of it um uh, i don't know man I, i'm looking at the <laughs> developer's blog this this is this is it I'm yep. like, what's new at it i don't know here's the yeah. picture go away <laughs> it's based on 2004 that's it that's it <laughs> But, but there is a big change, actually. The install ISOs now use the Calamari's installer, which is the universal installers that a lot of different distros use. They're using that now instead of Ubuntu's Ubiquity, Ubiquity installer. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty significant change. And I actually love Calamari's. I have used it on elementary OS. It's, it's really a nice installer. Hmm. Mm. I don't think I ever used it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm... As long as it installs, I, 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 Anaconda, basically, outside of that. And, okay. 
Do, do I have next buttons? Yeah, I don't have next buttons. No a next problem. button, a done button, and a change button. There, done. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, as long as I can hit Y, I'm like, okay, we'll take care of it later. Oh, <laughs> this is kind of exciting because LibreOffice yeah. has got a new version out at 7. Point not, and I know you're like, oh, but then you like Google Docs is great, and that's what you use. I don't say it's great; I say it works, and can't beat the price. This caught my attention, not because it's LibreOffice, but they used a uh, word in there that I didn't expect to see coming from an office suite, <laughs> yes. and that that word is Vulcan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, I, I'm going to have to check this out because, uh, Joel, you can go into it more, but yes, this is okay. GPU accelerated mm -hmm. with Vulcan in 7.0. Yeah, very nice. There's, oh gosh, this was a huge release. Uh, we also have a new version of the ODF format, uh, version 1.3. And one of the huge things here is it has the ability to use digital signatures for documents. And this is really huge. This is huge for the real estate um, industries, law, government, and security to start using LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Office because that, 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 that security has always been done on Microsoft Office. So that's very huge. And it now has open PGP based encryption of XML documents. Really cool. And um, this is just, these features are really, really needed in the industry to, for it to be taken seriously. And now with LibreOffice having a business version, now it can be taken seriously. They don't have it <laughs> so, yet. So, they don't have it yeah. yet, but it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in the works. And they had to have these features for it to work. And like uh, um, Ven was saying, it now has Vulkan GPU-based acceleration. Wow, that came out of the field. <laughs> yeah, it's like if even LibreOffice has Vulkan, then uh, I there's some game developers that I would like to ask what their excuse is now. <laughs> Yeah, and you can even run games within LibreOffice. <laughs> so, well, it's definitely going to add will be Vulcan like a new based. bit of flavor for like any type of Easter egg games. You can get away with a lot more. Yeah, a lot of LibreOffice yeah. um, <laughs> flight sim, you know. And yes, actually, uh, fully rendered. <laughs> we can definitely sit back and see where they're going to go because there was the bit of a kerfuffle when they accidentally pre-announced that we're going to have business offerings and a paid version and all that fun stuff. So grab your popcorn and sit back, but definitely go play with it. If that's something, if you've always dreamed like I have to have a hardware accelerated spreadsheet, <laughs> I'm not, uh, I mean, there's logic awesome. in there. There is. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, if especially dealing, for huge spreadsheets. <laughs> interesting to see. So this got an update and it's only been five years. That's practically breakneck development phase. <laughs> practically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And speaking of uh, five long years, it's been five long years since Pinto. We've had a release from Pinta and this is version 1.7. And, you know, for those of you out there who, who think the GIMP is too complex and Windows Paint Classic is a little bit too simple, try Pinta. Um, it's really, it's got a couple really cool new features. I had, had a lot of fun playing around with it. It now supports tabs for multiple canvases and has a neat smooth erase tool. And now this is something actually that was kind of big. You can hold the shift key in the transform tool to rotate in fixed increments a lot like you do in Photoshop, <laughs> which is very important. And um, I did have an issue with the stable uh, builds PPA. So just go and use the daily builds PPA for Ubuntu um, in the, the releases link I, that I put in the show notes. And that worked just fine for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I installed the stable and it worked just fine for me. So uh, okay, uh, I think that the... I think the server might have been down or something when I Could tried it be, the first yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I used to use uh, back in the Windows days. I used to use Paint.net because it was very much the happy medium between GIMP and Paint. Uh, so. Yeah, when I moved to the Linux world, it's like, is there something that gives me, like, different layers and 
all of that without, you know, having to learn the GIMP. I eventually learned the GIMP, but yeah. Uh, the Pinta was actually really, really nice. It's a mono-based open source version of Paint.net for the most part. Hmm. And I was really sad mm -hmm. to see it go because a few years back they just stopped updating. But it's back now. And it doesn't, uh, the stable release that they, that was uh, just released, it doesn't crash anymore if you grab two or three layers and move it in relation to another <laughs> nice. layer, which is nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I'm curious annoying. about is how does it handle tabs? Because one thing that just drives me insane with GIMP is if I have um, a bunch of tabs open and I hit control tab and it doesn't move tabs like ah oh. i di didn't test well, the tabs yet i just opened the one picture that i have that i know has a bunch of different layers and those it held <laughs> yeah so the tabs what's nice then it even has um you don't just have to click the tabs or or do the the keyboard command there's actually a list on the right hand side of all the tabs that you can select like kind of like layers but you can select the tabs that's which great is really but nice. it's useless to me unless it, the keyboard shortcut <laughs> is Control tab, like every yeah. other browser yeah. in the history of ever. If I see tabs, I expect to be able to scroll through them with control tab. You could probably change it in the. Uh, oh, the I options. probably could, yeah, but I configs. wouldn't have anything good yeah. to complain about during this cycle. No, <laughs> okay. I get that. But okay. I get yeah. There you go. Show business. Uh, what do we have up next? Up next, we have auto CPU freck. So chances are, if you're on Linux, you've heard about CPU freck which it allows you to change the frequency and um, the governor on your CPU on your Linux distribution. But as the creator of Auto CPU Frag points out, you uh, have to pass it at least, you know, you have to pick which speed you want it to be at and which governor you want to use, and then you have to give it your root password so it can change. With the uh, auto CPU frack, it tries to do that as automatically as possible, as the name would imply, obviously. Uh, and they give like an example of, um, it's like, oh yeah, with most um, distros, the CPU will be using the performance governor with turbo boost enabled regardless, but then you can change it to power save and it'll completely disable turbo boost. It's like, that was a bad example. That was a very bad example mm -hmm. because most distros uh, come either on demand or power save out of the box. They they don't come with a performance. I don't think any of the distros I've tried lately comes with the um, performance governor out of the box. And in Ubuntu itself, you need to disable the systemd managed uh, on demand service to get any other governor that isn't on demand to stick. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, the idea behind this is sound because he keeps saying, it's like, okay, if you use um, laptop tools uh, or TLP and um, you use the power save governor, your turbo boost is disabled. So if you need to do something bursty, like opening a new application where the processor would usually turbo boost as high as it can get for a couple of seconds and then come back down with the power save governor you can't do that so this uh will automatically manage your governor and frequency based on how well your battery is holding uh how much power is being used and the load on the system hopefully it won't introduce um i haven't actually tried it but i do hope they manage to implement this without it causing a lot of latency between switching states because that was a big thing for Intel a few years ago. It took a while. <laughs> oh, very cool. Well, I thought I was really impressed that it has a, uh, just a monitor mode. So you don't have to install it. You can just run um, TAC mode and uh, monitor and uh, just monitor and see, you know, all the enhancements it would make to your system. As well as, and this is huge, you can run it in a live mode that that temporarily, you know, runs it for just your session. And then you can reboot the computer and it's not there. And I can see that would, would come in really handy. Um, I could use that on my laptop if I'm, say, for instance, rendering animation. Mm -hmm. And it would save the battery. And then 
reboot and it, it would be gone unless you want to install it. So I thought that was really, really a nice feature. That's definitely neat. Uh, probably something you'd only be focusing on if you were running on a laptop. And, but are the modern laptops just the standard, you know, C-state stuff good enough? Yeah, nowadays they are. If you mm -hmm. let it be completely managed by the uh, firmware itself. Mm -hmm. But if you want it, especially in the case of a laptop, sometimes you do want that power savings to be a little bit more aggressive so you can squeeze those couple of minutes extra out of the battery life. And uh, yeah, no, the, the current tools that we have are very limited, mm. which is why, mm. um, like in like straight up comparison tests between Dell laptops, the ones that are running uh, Linux and the ones that are running Windows, uh, if Linux lives uh, has a longer battery life, the performance will be worse. And if you want to get that same bursty performance that you get on Windows on Linux, you have to have the processor in in performance mm -hmm. mode, basically. So your battery won't last as long. And that, that was one of the issues that's been present on Linux for a while. And this is very much attempting to um, address it. That's definitely good for laptops. I'm going to see on desktop. I was yeah. pleasantly surprised um, because uh, the CPU for a render box can suck down an just insane amount of power at full tilt. And I thought I was <laughs> yeah. going to have to disable power save for it. But no, uh, this box currently right now, I mean, I even wrote a script to switch back and forth between performance and power save. I have to use it. it. It's smart enough to boost up where it needs to, and most of the time it sits at like 1.7 gigahertz. And it's like, I'd say sipping power, but you know, it's like, yeah, I'm only using 90 watts. Yeah, idle. 1600 <laughs> uh, megahertz is as low as the 3700X goes. And mm. yeah, no, it spends most of the time there, and then it goes, mm -hmm. jumps up. <laughs> All right. So, this is a good news, Yay. everyone. Yeah, so I the I have been pwned dot com website is going open source and all the code is going to be open source. And for those of you out there who don't know, this um, is a site that allows you to search uh, uh, your email address with uh, multiple data breaches that have occurred over the years. And um, I actually uh, run it occasionally just to check my email addresses because sometimes I do find something. And the good news about this is that, that the um, developer, Troy Hunt, you know, he had stated, you know, he had talked about going open source a long time ago, and he finally did it. He, he realized it was time to do that, that open sourcing will make his uh, code even more secure, transparent, and, you know, much more powerful. And he's already gotten lots of feedback from the community and the community contributing uh, to it. Um, and, uh, uh, actually found even more breaches, which was really cool. <laughs> yeah. This just makes me sad. It makes me sad. <laughs> <sighs> it's a dark day. It, it it's the end times for conspiracy theorist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's very much, um, just ripping away some of my entertainment. It's like, no, the CIA runs them. Well, here's the code. Lizard people, but I, I don't know. Um, this is good news. I mean, that's definitely a site. Even knowing that it was on the up and up, it, it's good to have the transparency. And that was part of his reasoning mm -hmm. for it. He was like, hey, uh, it just boiled down to trust me. Yeah. Before. <laughs> and Yes. <laughs> And uh, as it turns out, most of the current web browsers implement something along the lines of the Have I Been Pwned system, which as soon as you're typing up a password with an email address, it goes, those have been compromised. Also, stop reusing passwords. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, no, he says, like, there's a bunch of open source software that runs the internet from the browsers to um, content delivery systems to... All the encryption that you're currently going over to see that website, everything is open source, so might as well do the other thing that's also very useful, which is, uh, has my password been pwned? Yeah. <laughs> 
I think it's great, man. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I don't know if I've seen that in Fire. Does Firefox have that? Because I know Google's popped yeah. up and it's like, hey, this password has been in whatever breach. Like, thanks, creepy Google. And, um, Firefox will also go, if you're using Firefox Sync, it goes through your passwords. It's like, okay, these websites uh, have had breaches. You're registered for them and your password was breached. So mm. go change it. <laughs> Good to know. And I like this is there. This is always good for just checking stuff. And I'd yes. like to see the system against the database of maybe get some notifications. Like, but then see, I don't know how you do that. Oh yes, let's link my accounts with bad passwords. Like, no, no maybe, maybe not a good idea. But this is because this reminds me of the pocket chip. Wait. I'm not uh, there. No, we're so at we're AMD. Not quite. AMD. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Get uh, close. Pocket PC. So the AMD, AMD GPU. Okay. GPU. There we go. Why did I skip tabs? Boom. <laughs> That's on me, kids. Uh, good news, everyone. Good news. Uh, Radian Software for Linux 20.30 is out. The big thing in this is full support for Ubuntu 20.04.1. That, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, this is the pro driver to which you know if you're playing games and stuff like this you want to avoid it like the plague that it is yeah that's for a compute those are compute drivers just no <laughs> if yes <laughs> on the other hand you're running productivity stuff like maybe davinci resolve you absolutely positively want to have these installed and this goes back pretty far um all the way back to the r9 360 and all of your fire pros are in there and even the vega seven which amd made possibly nine of and uh <laughs> and you can items. find them second hand for three thousand dollars on yeah, ebay right <laughs> yeah so i now i've actually got to go through and do the arduous task as of updating my centos render box that has maya and moto and da vinci and all the things on it uh, that's always a big project. <laughs> so, but I really want to do that because now it has new drivers for my Fire Pro, which does have 128 gigs of RAM on the GPU. So it was, it is, it is my most highest professional uh, GPU I have in, in this room. <laughs> but Pedro, there is a silver lining to this driver update. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. And I even searched for it in the, um, the install instructions, I went through those install instructions with a fine tooth comb as in control F, GIMP. Oh, I guess it doesn't need those anymore. <laughs> You've changed, AMD. You've changed. <laughs> yeah, no, it used to require, like FGLRX used to require, if you never tried oh, to install yeah. FGLRX in the past, uh, mm -hmm. it used to require the GIMP help installation yeah. files in English. For some reason, it was uh, it was but... our favorite, not a favorite thing, but it was definitely something we pointed out on the show we do Saturday Linux Gamecast yeah. Weekly for years. It was, like, it was logical. It was like this version of X or of GCC, GIMP help file. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> then again, that I was back we'll in the days now. when the AMD drivers would have an X button, go through it, say they've installed, and they did absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You reboot it, and sometimes you'd get an X service. Most of the times you wouldn't. <laughs> it was an adventure. Now let's talk about the yeah. thing that looks an awful lot thing. like a pocket chip. Yes, and uh, well, the original version was uh, very much based on the uh, the pocket chip. Pocket PC is going open source. We keep getting a lot of these news, and I'm really, really glad that... Um, it is actually happening. And yeah, Popcorn Computers, they're currently developing the um, the Pocket PC, which is that Nintendo 2DS looking planar computer that has a screen and the keyboard b beneath it. And it came with the option that it uh, also has like a long range um, connectivity option for the Wi-Fi's and very long battery life that's like the point of the thing is to be used at a reasonable distance from the thing and still give you very good battery life so you can be on the go 
but yeah it, it it was the original vision for this particular uh pocket pc was based on the um gr8 chip pro and they're still taking orders so i'm guessing well one of two things is happening here uh either they are very confident in the product that they have and they're just getting it open source to say this is what we're doing or um especially since they're still taking pre-orders they might be looking for that shot of uh, fresh development directly to the vein because they're starting to run out of ideas. So whatever the case may be, I, I hope we see uh, pocket PCs and uh, you can pre-order yourself one for 300 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. 1.2 gigahertz quad core arm. So it's Cortex A53, two gigajoules of DDR3, 32 EMCC. Could be four. That could easily be four. Please change that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, USB C, and it's in a nice three D rendered case. So yes, <laughs> it's yeah. again, it's very Nintendo two D S E with the layout. Definitely Pedro, and I'm still <laughs> still hoping. Like we talked about on the initial release, um, that the when they were um, when we first started talking about what was then the popcorn PC. Um, I'm still hoping that the keys aren't squishy rubber, like it looks like on the <laughs> on the <Yeah>. picture. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is that they're taking feedback from the community. And of course, now that it's open source, they can take even more feedback from the community. But they are even for the keyboard layout. So maybe they're going to take feedback on, on how the buttons feel as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, I think it's definitely going to be, you know, membrane because I, I could see myself with the argument of, can you make it clicky and nice? And like, how much real typing do you think you're going to be doing on this? But I yeah. wanted to make noise while I type. <laughs> <laughs> And the membrane, yeah. actually, for this particular form factor, it makes sense. They just can't make the rubber too hard. Mm -hmm. because otherwise people will go eh, eh. yeah <laughs> that's true, that's true. I, I think yeah i just don't want it ultra soft forgivable when you type in with your thumbs <laughs> i mean you, yeah. you, you just expect that you know it's like oh i want a clicky nintendo switch no you don't trust me you don't <laughs> no, you don't <laughs> so good luck with that 300 bucks uh to pre-order uh that's awesome that's your jam I promised you a Microsoft story. I did. Uh -huh. I did. <laughs> now, in my defense, it's not strictly Linux related. You know, this is borderline. <laughs> ha ha. You would think me a better person than to do this. <laughs> then put the story in. <laughs> well, I put most of the stories in, let's be honest. Um, Microsoft hey. loves Linux segment. Everyone's least favorite web browser will soon... Be impossible to uninstall. This is from Tech Radar. All of this is going to be in our show notes. Microsoft Edge, get this. The one we're all desperately waiting to show up on Linux, which Redmond mm -hmm. said they will deliver. Microsoft Edge will remain on Windows devices, whether you like it or not. No, mm -hmm. kids, this is not a repeat from 1996. Nay, this, this is <laughs> the new Microsoft. Um, <laughs> and I... Admittedly, admittedly, when I saw this, I saw this and I said, okay, you're, you're, you're kind of winding us up, Tech Radar. You needed to write a story. And uh, so I went over to the blog and they're like, beginning with the general availability, the new Microsoft Edge in January, Microsoft LOL died of fire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's legit. The new version of Microsoft Edge gives uh, included. So the option to uninstall it or use legacy versions of Microsoft Edge will no longer be available straight up from support.microsoft.com. They, they're, they're not spinning this even a little bit. You're like, here's anti. That's what Microsoft said. Mm -hmm. So, and all, all, Pedro, all I'm saying <laughs> is you, when, when we get the Debian packages for Edge and it asks for the root password the second time, Mm -hmm. Maybe no. Okay. No. <laughs> Why are you updating System yeah. D, Edge? No, no. But uh, no. at this point, it's like, really, Microsoft? Do you 
are you that desperate to launder some money mm -mm. because you've tried that once before nope. with internet explorer and it got you a massive antitrust from the eu what do you think will happen now it's Microsoft. This is what I said, yeah. I think, two weeks ago. Just... I get nervous every time Microsoft does it good because the stupid <laughs> is coming. Here's the stupid. It, they, they have to maintain that perfect ratio of like, ah, remember us? <laughs> you know, it's th this is what it cost in order to uh, hook the Blender Foundation up with some extra cash. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, seriously, yeah. drop this. Just let people uninstall Edge as much as they like and give the money that you would be paying the EU for the antitrust that you're going to get. Um, pay it to the Blender Foundation. Give it to Strider. So he, uh, I think he's running out of that epic money. So. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. The, um, you know what? Maybe the lawyers were just bored. They're like, hey. Let's earn our job. You guys push this through. We'll have something to do for another decade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is just so unbelievable. We got this. Unbelievable. You know, inter Internet Exploder Exploder versus Netscape all over again. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> it's a thing. So we got to hop into a slice of pie. We are running short on time. But uh, if you like what we do, you're like, hey, man, these Yahoo is pretty cool. We like hanging out with you live or more than likely you're downloading the podcast version. You'll notice, hey, we're not trying to sell you mattresses or anything. There's no advertising in it because we're completely community supported. Where can they head to, Pedro, if they want to community support us? You can community support us all <laughs> the way. Oh, OK. I like the way but, you're talking. Uh, careful where you put your hands uh the easiest way is to grab yourself a mouse and go to linuxgamecast.com and hit the the um not the contact button that place yeah. <laughs> hover over the support button there's a multitude of ways that you can uh basically support us really and you Yay. have your patreons uh your libra pays merch uh store.linuxgamecast.com uh we have stickers we have T-shirts, t-shirts, hoodies. <laughs> I really don't want to think about hoodies Mugs. when I'm sweating this much, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll buy you a hoodie if you wear it next week. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> we have possible uh, fanny packs coming too. I'll definitely buy one for too. the winter, but no, yeah, it'll no. be great. I, we, we can say it's part of your training. I'm like dun 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 dun, dun and then you can be like, yeah, I'm getting. Ready. I don't have that much body fat to burn. Uh, listen, right? <laughs> basically, I just want to see you pass out on stream. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Patreon is absolutely the way that you should uh, support us. If f for some reason you've seen it, you've seen the show if you like this it, far. It, if it's your jam, yeah. hook us up. That's a great way for us to fund what we do. Um, you know, in all of our ends, we try to put up some information, stuff we learn and building the studio and all that information has been pushed out because I want more people doing more awesome stuff with Linux. Yeah. And I want to try to make that as easy as possible. Or maybe we'll just make you laugh. Either way, whatever works for you, man. Yeah. Kick us a buck a week. That's all we ask. But. Yeah. And we, we have to some, thank people some people to thank. People, <laughs> well, hurry on before I get off we the got, screen. <laughs> we got our wonderful executive producer and Fox Dog who gifted the Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout to me and Pedro on Steam. Yes. <laughs> and it's been a really fun game. We've been really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty fun. Seriously, thank you, Foxy. <laughs> and Yay, I Foxy. suppose I should also thank Mir, okay. uh, yes. who resubbed to us on uh, Twitch for another eleven months. So you crazy person! That you. sounds like thank his you. own problem, man. I mean, that's that's just a gambling addiction. That's all that is. <laughs> Thinly veiled. All right, now let's get into our singular a slice of slice pie. pie. Ah. This is more my speed, you know. I the the pocket chip thing. I was like, okay, that's cool. This, mm -hmm. this, is this awesome. made me want to go dig out my old, what was it, Motorola? Or the Nokia's? It might, I think it was the G1 that I had. I'm trying to find the spot in the video. So there you go. You get an idea of what's going on there. <laughs> nice slider. <laughs> yeah. Yep. What's the name of the product, Pedro? The name of the product is the Node Zero Terminal oh. 3. For some reason, there's been two others that I wasn't aware of, but yeah, uh, they have the Note 3. Yeah, the major gimmick, besides being a Raspberry Pi based computer that we've seen time and time again, is the slidey out keyboard, which is very much like the uh, the Nokia's and the Motorola's and 
There were a couple of other phones that did that too. I <laughs> Palm can't <Pre>. remember. Yes. <laughs> Palm Pixie. <laughs> and um yeah, it, it is based on the Pi Zero because it has to basically fit the screen, the keyboard, and everything else in what is effectively not that much larger than the original Labrum phone prototype. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A little thicker, I think. <laughs> Just slightly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's zero based because, yeah, the zero is just teeny tiny. <laughs> I think that's neat, man. Just having a little slide out. Is this something that I can download and print or do I got to buy it? I'm sure there will be um, designs for the case available at one point. Uh, but right now they're still focusing on um, getting everything into the main PCB. So they have the one PCB solution that you just plug the pie into and everything goes from there uh but yeah they will say uh they will share more in the uh coming weeks ish i like that so. uh one thing i'm definitely <laughs> constantly worried about is uh as somebody who's tried to design a sliding screen before that that works about five times i'm like oh, okay <laughs> we gotta rethink how we're doing this connector <laughs> oh. oh it unplugged oh it crimped that cable oh <laughs> i wish them best of luck with that i mean that I, is there something to be said i mean some people definitely um does anyone still make a physical keyboard on mobile I'm trying to think yeah so i think doesn't lg still make a have a new version the one that like pedro had but a newer version oh the yeah keyboard? the uh lg oh. wine flip phone oh flip phone that doesn't uh, count yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the slide out. Um, hmm. I remember my. I know first I've seen Android one. I know I've seen one. Had a slide out keyboard. Uh, I think it was Wimpy a Motorola. had one. Yeah, uh, Wimpy I think had Samsung one. Uh, makes it was one. a phone. It was like it also a very thick phone, but yeah. it had the slidey out keyboard. Uh, it, it was very. I mean, it had a touch screen. You could <laughs> yeah go through it. Mean, this is Android one point oh man. I mean. Um, I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember Samsung that. did have one at one point. Anyway, it'll be fun to have something like that because especially if you get a little pie project and it's portable, uh-oh, touch support and you're trying to hit some mice type on the screen, you don't have a stylus, boom, pop open the keyboard and navigate like that. Hey, problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Very nice. Maybe they want to tell us about their pie projects. How can they do that? Ooh. <laughs> you can grab yourself a megaphone, stand on the other side of the English channel and shout and maybe I'll hear you. But actually, probably the easiest way is to go to LinuxGameCast.com and now, now you can hit the contact button and uh, pick LWDW on the uh, show box. Otherwise, you might end up some might end up sending some inadvertent hate mail for that Saturday show. What we do. But yeah, just fill out the form, and uh, if you don't include too many earls, uh, we'll... Um, I told the, you, the uh, earls are easy. <laughs> Watch out for the dukes. <laughs> uh, the spam golem might not get mad at you and actually let us read your message. You know what's very so, impressive sometimes? Because I get an entire log with some people are persistent. They, yeah. <laughs> which, me being me, I respect the tenacity, and but you... <laughs> genuinely burn 15 minutes just redoing this and it <sighs> more power to you even though right up there at the top it gives you an email address if you just want to email us but hey man that rocks uh jill you take this first one we were talking about okay. how browsers have changed and i might have said yes. man netscape <laughs> 4 series was a bit rubbish back in the day at the time um but we didn't have anything we didn't know better but eh. yeah well this comes to us from mike g and mike g. he says oh sure drag on netscape but it was so much better than mosaic true that mike g true that <laughs> <laughs> thanks for another great show and yeah ven was ragging on it and i called it net scrape because <laughs> that's what we used to call it but it was still my favorite browser i love netscape i love the i i still like that that layout 
and uh, that's one of the reasons I like Vivaldi so much. <laughs> it's 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 that's very similar to Netscape. Off beige. Yeah. A yeah. Theme that it defaulted to. Yeah. Oh no, no, yeah. no, not Netscape six. That thing was like turquoise. No, three. Shiny. <laughs> that monstrosity. It's like, oh no. But um yeah, way back and it was using what was it? Mm -hmm. Like a TCTKL uh widget set. I mean it it, it looked very Unixy. Um mm -hmm. it was awesome. It was also available in Sco Linux. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, okay, fair enough. Uh, use what you want. What do you like? Uh, just use links. I mean, that hasn't changed. Yes, we love links or e links. E links. <laughs> or e links too with an E C E L I N K or L Y N X. Oh, I thought it was spelled with a seven. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not with purple. Purple. Okay. <laughs> okay. Up next, uh, this is Troy. From Troy. <laughs> yeah, Troy says, I'm trying to figure out how to set up Jack Audio. I installed Ubuntu Studio 2004 onto a netbook I have. I have a USB microphone plugged into it along with an M Audio M Track audio device. I want to take the audio from the USB microphone and output it from the mixer's speaker ports out of like the left channel uh, to pipe it into my Xbox controller as my microphone audio. Oh God! Uh, I'd like to take the speaker audio party chat from the I controller feel you, Pedro. into. I, I, I was like, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. I mean, you get points for uh, creativity there. Well, it's but, like um... reading suspension horror novel. You're like, well, you, I'm invested yeah. now. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take the speaker audio party chat from the controller into the microphone in ports uh, on my audio mixer so I can tell OBS that my USB mic is my voice and the microphone port on the mixer is party chat. I had this working under Windows. Uh, okay. Uh, but the only way I could get it to work using Pulse Audio was to create a loopback so that all audio looped out through the M track, but that made it that if I plug the party chat into the mixer, they could hear that as well. I'm hoping that if I understand what Jack Audio is, that I should be able to create the setup I want. I just can't figure out how to see the devices. Hmm. My God, man. This <laughs> <laughs> is awesome. I was like, the only visual representation of the setup that I was thinking of was like a wizard eating spaghetti. <laughs> okay, so these, when you plug one of these into the actual USB, the audio thing <laughs> actually shows up. So you can use the uh, little not three and a half mil jack at the bottom and the little grill here as the microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to place in my head how this would. This is where the wizard comes in. <laughs> 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 I think I need a wizard or at least adult supervision because there are dark thoughts candles coming into my mind off. right now. Um, <laughs> Julie threw in a, uh, there'll be a link in the show notes for a tutorial for yeah. setting up Jack. The issue with that is uh, for this use case, you can't run um, two different devices with Jack. Mm. So that's not going to fly. Um, now, I kind of tapped out. I'm not being mean. I'm just going to be very honest with you before you spend a lot of time. First, you're probably using voice meter banana on Windows <laughs> to do this, which by all accounts is a great program on Windows. I mean, it's definitely um, simplified some things for people doing audio routing. But um, on Linux, mm, on a netbook, mm, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think you should tangle with that is what I'm saying. Because uh, outside of Gaming, the second most demanding thing you can ask of a CPU is doing real-time audio processing. I'm just going to be honest with you. Trying to do anything close to what you're trying to get to is probably going to end in with tears and X runs. But that big kicker is that USB mic, because that's bringing in your second interface, which Jack is not going to be able to tango with, not even a little bit, simply because you're going to be dealing with two clock sources and you're going to have clock drift and it's going to get clicky and poppy. I mean, there's a hackity hack hack way to make that work, but the results would not be desirable. But you're on the right track with the loopback module. Um, that's going to be your best bet for what you're, because you do have to realize what you're trying to do right now is Rube Goldberg. It's somebody who has done stuff like this in the past and done shows with a stop. Um, I can respect that. But the loopback, 
definitely going to be your best bet. What you need to get working is some type of mix minus setup or whatever software that you're using needs to introduce some type of echo cancellation. That's so they will, the party will not hear themselves back. Yeah, the that one stream won't be able to hear itself, mm -hmm. only hear the other streams. <laughs> right. Um, now, we take care of that. It's one thing you can notice with any shows that I do. We say some things, Pedro. I'm, I'm talking over Pedro. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm oh, still talking over go. Pedro. I can do this. Um, <laughs> Hi, Jordan. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, hey, deep cut. No, I'm chill. <laughs> um, so here's kind of the thing, man. Uh, you'll notice that you'll be listening to other podcasts or live streams and stuff like that when people hit each other. That's audio ducking because you're using software echo cancellation and it's doing its best to prevent the other person from hearing themselves back. But that then it goes like, you, you know what I'm talking about? We don't have that because we've set up a proper mix minus for all the hosts. So we can have natural flowing conversation. Look into Ondoor. That might be able to do it. Uh, again, the biggest thing you're going to run into is that USB microphone. If you get an XLR mic, I went and looked at the M Audio, uh, which will support XLR. You could do that with like a, what you're trying to accomplish, that M Audio XLR mic, then take a little cheap uh, USB input output like we used to use before I moved everything to IP audio in the studio. And you can do the second channel into the M audio for that and plus the return audio with a mix minus. But if you have a mixer, because you mentioned a mixer in there, see if you have FX send or an auxiliary send because even stupid cheap little mixers like the Behringer Xenix 802, non-USB, there's USB version now, it has a mix minus so you can pull out that audio so they won't hear themselves back. That's how we started. Everything that we do. Well, that affects the magical FX and magic red <laughs> knobs, man. But most, you know, your Mackies at the budget mixers. This is this is technology that's as old as mixers, man. And so being able to set up a proper mix minus, I know I need to do a video on that because I know a lot of people don't do it correctly. Even big, big shows, like I'm talking like millions of downloads, because you know, everyone's scrambled to try to do like Skype interviews and stuff like that because of the COVIDs. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to do it. I was like, oh, that person said they're an audio engineer, didn't they? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Anyway, humble brag is over, but take a look at that. Email us back and let me know what solution you end up doing. But we've overstayed our time, so we got to get out of here. I'm going to roll some credits and we're going to heap some big sloppy praise all over you. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, Troy and Mike G, for your feedback. It was excellent. <laughs> More feedback. Yay. More feedback. <laughs> More I gotta do feedback. The the best <laughs> feedback. <laughs> oh, hello, Justin in chat. And Novadell's here. And Chibsy. We love our Chibsy, too. We genuinely couldn't do a show if we couldn't talk over each other, especially on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Hence my uh, joke about hi Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's called us week. out on it yet. <laughs> what? I think well uh, us just talking <laughs> over each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs>